Now, you probably noticed that in the last video when we were creating the interface, I skipped over um, connecting the button actions on the minefield buttons uh, to make something happen when the player clicks on the button, either with the left mouse button or the right mouse button. And the reason that I kind of skipped over that is we don't want to use the set on action method for this because set on action can't tell you which button was used in order to press the the minefield button. We need to use a different method for that. So what I want to use for this is uh, I'm going to refer to the button that I'm creating here, uh, minefield buttons at column and row. And I'm going to use set on mouse clicked event. The mouse clicked event gives me a little bit more information than the action event because I can now be able to use that to tell which uh, button was pressed. Uh, instead of calling my event E for event, I'm just going to call it M for mouse event. And when that mouse event occurs, uh, I want to call the method that I was planning to use in order to process my button clicks, which I named my method process mouse event and I want to be told what column, what row I'm dealing with, and I'd like to be told what mouse button got pressed, right? So on the mouse event, I want to process mouse event, and I need to tell it column, row, and mouse button. So it's column, row, and to know which mouse button got pressed, I'm going to go M, dot and now m is a mouse event and mouse event has a lot of the same things that an action event has uh, but it also has uh, like get click count to tell um, if it was double click or triple clicked on the mouse uh, i can tell you the location of the mouse and most importantly for minesweeper i can tell you which button on the mouse was pressed and it returns that as a mouse button type object Okay, now you see that uh, Eclipse is still calling out an error here. We have a bit of a problem with using the variable column and row. I want to show you that error specifically. It says a local variable call uh, is defined in, in, in an enclosing scope. That's inside this set on mouse clicked part. Has to be final or effectively final. Um, basically, within this uh, lambda expression, the little arrow thing here, Eclipse doesn't really want to allow for whatever the value call has, and it's going to say the same thing about row after we fix column. Um, it doesn't want those to be able to change. Uh, the best way around this problem that I've found to uh, avoid this is to go uh, make a new final integer, and I'm going to call it uh, action column. I'm just going to set it equal to what the column is right now. But now I'm going to be having a final uh, int. And I'm going to do the same thing for the row. So I'm going to make a final int action row, which will be equal to whatever the value of the row is right now. So I'm just basically copying the value of column and row into a final, which makes it a constant, can't change um, variable. And so then I'll use that action column and action row. Now Eclipse is not upset that those values, oh, they're variables and they might change. And wh what will Java do if the variables change you know, on a button? It doesn't have to worry about it. Now they're constants. All right, so what's going to happen in the program when the player uh, clicks on the mouse button? That's process mouse event. And it depends on which of the two mouse buttons they press. We're going to have a different um, reaction if they press the left mouse button or the right mouse button. So I'm going to start with an if statement. If the button that got pressed is equal to mouse button dot, what are my choices here? The choices are not left and right, although that's usually the way they are. The choices are primary and secondary because if somebody's using a left-handed mouse, 
the primary and secondary are actually switched around the other way. So anyway, if uh, the person presses the primary mouse button, then I'm going to want to do the minesweeper action for that area. I'll come back to writing that in. And if they were to press the secondary mouse button, so that would normally be the right mouse button, then I want to set up the flags. Right? Or more precisely, if there's not a flag there already, I want to put a flag, and if there is a flag on that space, I want to take the flag away. So first, let's think about how we would set the flag on that space. So it's the minefield buttons array that we want to access at column and row. And what we want to do is we want to set an image for that or set a graphic for that particular uh, button. So we'll set a graphic, and I want a new image view. Uh, based on the flag image that I've already preloaded. And I would like to only show the image of the flag. If I'm putting a picture on the button, that's the only thing I want to see. Uh, but sometimes I see text on the buttons, and so I need to change things around a little bit here. Uh, I'm going to go minefield buttons. Uh, column and row and I'm going to set um, the content display Try to bring that back to memory for a second I want to set the content display to content display graphic only because I only want to see the flag I don't want to see any numbers that might be written on that tile or, or anything else I just want to see the graphic of the flag and that'll put the flag onto the particular button. But now if the person right clicks on that button again, I want to take the flag off of that particular button. So, I mean, I can imagine that as being, you know, very, very similar code, except instead of setting the graphic to the flag, I'll set the graphic to nothing. And I might go back from um, having graphic only to being a text only button. So uh, if there was no flag, and I do that stuff, I'm going to come back and figure out how I can tell if there's not a flag in a second. Um, and if there was a flag, then I do this stuff. Okay, well, how can I tell if this particular minefield button? has been flagged. Uh, one solution that I came up with, I don't know if it's the best one, there might be a more elegant one out there, but my idea was to take the text part of the button. So I'll go minefield buttons, uh, column, and row, and I'll just uh, actually write something in on the button. I just put a capital F on the button for flag. Now, remember, I'm setting it up to be graphic only, so nobody will see that capital F. I'll just see the picture of the flag. But now I have something that I can use in an if statement to see if there's a flag there or not, right? And when they take the flag away, I'm going to set the text back to just nothing. So it's just blank text. This way I can sort of switch back and forth seeing if there's a flag on the on the button yeah maybe that's a little bit sly there's probably a better way to do that but it works it works all right so now i can use my if statement if minefield buttons not set text but get text see what text is written on there if anything and i'll only want to put a flag down if there's not a flag there um, to begin with. Now, so I can go get text dot equals. Now, if it equals F, there is a flag, so that's not the time I want to put the flag down. I'm going to take that semicolon out. I want to do it when it's not equal to F. Okay, if, if the text on the button is not equal to F, 
then the person is trying to put a flag onto the button. So I'll set the text to F and I'll put the image in place. And if the text is equal to F, there is a flag on this button and I'll erase the text, take the graphic away and have the button set back to displaying text only. Right, so that sets me up for flagging. And I can actually run this now and just test if that works. Right, so if I pick any particular button and I right click on it, the flag image appears, right? And that works on any button. And if I right click on another button, the flag or a, a button where the flag is already there, the flag disappears. So that's working. And I can go back and forth between being flagged and not being flagged. Okay, what about sweeping the space? If I press the primary button, well, I have a method for sweeping the space. And in the next video, we're actually going to write the code for how to sweep mines. But if they press the left button on a particular spot, then that's what I want to do. I want to sweep that space. I want to sweep mines at column and row. And we'll talk about why I'm not uh, actually putting the code for that here in this if statement um, in some of the next videos. But one reason is it just sort of keeps my methods a little bit smaller because that, that sweeping of the space is going to take a number of lines. So that it's kind of where the majority of the code and the logic for Minesweeper happens. So I'd like to keep that in and of itself and not be part of the um, processing of mouse events. Like I'd like the processing mouse event thing to just decide which button was pressed and then respond to those two buttons. I mean, I could have put this in a method of its own as well, but that might be a little overkill. That's only like seven lines of code. Sweeping the mines takes about 30 lines of code or so. So I'm going to put that in its own method. Now, after I sweep that space, it's possible that that was the last space. So they might have won the game here. And I want to do a check to see if they won. So if number of areas that have been swept, and that's going to be updated in the sweep mines method. If the number of areas that have been swept is equal to fields calls times uh, field rows, there's no S in fields, minus the total number of mines. Okay, so columns times rows gives me the uh, area of the whole grid, which would be 225 buttons minus 30 buttons I'm not supposed to click on because they're mines, would tell me how many spots I have to click in order to win the game. And because I could change up the size of my minefield at any time by just changing those constants, I'm going to use the constants as a calculation here uh, to see what the number is instead of just working the number out myself and putting it putting a number there. Uh, so if I've swept that many areas, then what happens? Well, it's game over. And I have a method for game over in my um, plan already. So I'm going to call my game over method. And my game over method takes a few arguments for it as well. It takes basically the message you want to say to the person when it's game over. And I want to say, you cleared all the mines. Try to have a good grammar here all the mines. Well done. Something along those lines. And it also takes, uh, what's the title going to be? That's the second argument. Uh, so the title is going to be victory. And uh, it takes another uh, string to s because it's going to create a button on the uh, message box that pops up. And that button's also going to say victory in this case. And the last thing it takes is an icon to put with the message box. And so I'm going to make a new image view uh, out of the flag, I guess. The only other icon. I don't want to show them the bomb if they won. I want to show them something else. And I didn't load any other pictures. So I'll just use the flag. All right. So there's my mouse events processed.